Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. First it was the rain and now here comes the wind. Exact Track 4D radar clearing up just a bit for now. It's what's coming after that is the real concern. Now let's take a live look outside from our downtown sky cam. Right now winds are gusting to 41 miles per hour and that's only going to go up. We thank you for being with us here at 5 o'clock. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skilly at a wind advisory in effect now until 10 o'clock tonight. So let's start things off here at 5 with Kim Adams. Uh, hopefully it won't last too long though, right Kim? No, it does not last very long, only lasts a few hours, but it's enough time to knock things around that aren't tied down, especially in your yard or trash cans, things like that. 41 in Detroit was the uh, highest wind gust in the last 24 hours. 40 in Adrian and Coldwater South Bend had a 43 mile per hour gust, but notice it gets a little bit lighter as you head to the north with 32 mile per hour winds in Troy, 33 in Howell. Now let's talk about our temperatures because we are so close to breaking a record, but we're not there. It's 58 at City Airport, 60 in Monroe, 60 in Adrian, but Metro Airport still stuck at 55 degrees. The record is 56, so we'll see if in the next hour or two we can get to it. We also have some rain moving into parts of Metro Detroit. And it looks like it's going to be heavy at times, but not very long lived. So if you live uh, on the east side, you've got about another hour to go. You're on the west side. You're just starting to get those showers right now. Sharp drop in temperatures behind the frontal boundary, though. 51 at 6 o'clock and by midnight tonight, we're down into the 30s, but we warm right back up again. Take a look at temperatures over the next several days. Normal highs are in the 30s. We'll be close to normal Friday and Saturday and then right back to warm air for Sunday. More on the rain and the wind coming up in the forecast. But first, if you want to check out the rain in your neighborhood, want to know when it's coming and going, the best way to do it, go to your favorite app store, type in WDIV and download the forewarn weather app. All right, Kim, our other top story here at five Detroit Mayor Duggan laying out plans to spend the city's $156 million surplus. He wants the money to mainly go to the city's neighborhoods, replacing sidewalks, removing dangerous trees and improving parks. Megan Woods is live on this story tonight. Megan, it's a lot of money and the hope is that it's going to go a long way. Kimberly, a lot of money and a lot of projects. Uh, the hope is for this money to go to. We spoke to Detroiters who use those sidewalks, those parks, that public transportation to see what they thought about this proposal. $20 million would go to replacing neighborhood sidewalks, something people who use them say is long overdue. Certain areas worse than others. Yes, yes, it makes a big difference. I have kids and it's hard for kids to ride bikes on messed up sidewalks, so yeah, I, I would like that. Plus older people, you know, with uh, like disabilities and stuff like that. Another $19.9 million would go to public transportation, like upgrading the people mover with new cars, as well as developing this transit station on the former state fair grounds. Right now, there's not much here. Yeah, bare bones, nothing there. There's not even a restroom for people who's waiting here. You know, uh, it'd be better for like, I see other cities with like actual time schedules where the buses pull up, that would be like really big. The mayor's spending plan also calls for millions of dollars to go to dead and dangerous tree removal, demolishing unsalvageable buildings across the city, park renovations, the city's retiree protection fund and risk management fund. The proposal still has to be approved, but it gives the everyday Detroiter something to look forward to. Um, it's, it gives a better overall city, not just for downtown, but you know, for the, the outer city. The mayor plans to present his budget to city council early next month, but this upcoming Monday is when they have the estimate revenue conference and that's open to the public. We'll have that information on clickondetroit.com. Reporting live, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. As somebody who lives in the city of Detroit, I'm looking forward too to seeing how this money will be spent and what will look like. Megan, I have to comment though, you, it looks like the wind's blowing around a little bit, whipping there. Uh, That's right. Yeah, it, it, did the temperature just drop? Yes, so, so earlier it was warmer, the sun was out, and it wasn't that bad, but the wind quickly, like within minutes, picked up and it got a little chillier. I had to grab my scarf, yeah, I so it is changing <laughs> Yeah, we'll let, you, we'll let you get in and, and uh, from the wind. We appreciate your report this, this afternoon, Megan. Thank you. 
Well, how much money was taken and who took it in the first place? Those are just a few of the questions at the center of a now closed investigation into more than $685,000 of money scammed out of Detroit Public Library. Well over a half a million dollars. According to authorities, the city was scammed by a fake email to make wire transfers over the course of a year, leaving the library without money the library needs. Grant Herms joins us now. So this has been investigated. The investigation now closed, but the money's still missing. Yeah, Devin Kimberly, we are talking about more than $400,000 still missing. Now, the inspector general whose investigation this was said that the city nor the library did anything wrong. They were simply the victims and yet another one of those online scams we hear so much about. Detroit's inspector general saying an investigation into hundreds of thousands of dollars that were scammed out of city coffers is now over and out of her hands. There is no evidence that any library employees or any city employees engaged in any official conduct that resulted in the fraudulent transfer. The issue stems from payments made in 2020 and 2021 from the office of Detroit's chief financial officer. The payments were requests to wire money to an account that appeared to come from an official Detroit Public Library email. But it was a scam. In all, the city sent $685,000 to scammers based somewhere in Malaysia. They were only able to recover $277,000, leaving more than $407,000 unaccounted for. It was a scam. So it's a fraudulent activity that was initiated and engaged by a third party. And tragically, the library and the city are both victims to this crime. In a statement, Detroit's OCFO saying in part, law enforcement has been involved but has not shared details of their activities with us. The library and the city both are victims in this matter. Local 4 did attempt to reach Detroit Public Library but did not receive a response back. Now the next question here is obviously how do you get all of that money back? Well, DPL says they want the city to pay it back to them because they were the ones that spent it in the first place to this scammer. The city says not so fast. We are both victims here. We also reached out to the FBI to see if there was an ongoing investigation. Devin, they said they could neither confirm nor deny any investigation into this case for Detroit Public Libraries. Back to you. Gray, we know the city does have a pretty robust cybersecurity policy. So, uh, you know, a fair question, right? How does how does something like this happen? Right. You look at this, all this money. You say, how does this happen? Well. The issue is these scams can often be very, very sophisticated, and yeah. all it takes is one person to make one mistake. We've seen this across the country from D.C. to Texas to California. It just goes to show that this can happen almost anywhere. Nobody, including the city of Detroit, apparently is immune from these things. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right, Grant. A man fights back against his carjackers outside of a gas station on Detroit's west side. Yeah, police say the man was leaving the gas station on 7 Mile and Grand River just after midnight when two people pulled up and tried to steal his car. But police say that man stabbed both of the carjackers. Then one of the thieves shot him. He's in critical condition. The carjacking suspects both in the hospital. We are working to learn more about a shooting this morning on Detroit's west side. A man in his 30s was shot and killed on Griggs near the lodge in Wyoming. We're told the man is in serious condition. We don't know the circumstances surrounding the shooting or if the shooter has been arrested. Tonight, there's a new place on Detroit's east side that's looking to help end chronic homelessness. The Healthy Housing Center is combining a shelter and medical facility under one roof to give some Detroiters the help they need. And our Rod Maloney got a tour of the facility today. This area behind me used to be the seventh precinct for Detroit Police Department, but right now it is a facility for homeless people to turn their lives around. The one thing the city has been missing, though, is a facility for the homeless to go on an immediate basis to get medical care, mental health care, and set into the program to get into this facility. Detroit's homeless recovery program is a tiered process. One a la young is successfully exiting. If I can do this, they can do it too. He spent years on the street with a drug problem and had worked in Michigan politics in Lansing. I sat there on the mountaintop in the valley and in this stuff's boat. That has completed me to do this, what I'm doing now. Working to help other homeless Detroiters move upward and onward as well. And it's about to get a lot easier. More women in the summer, more men in the winter. 
Linda Little directs the program and gave us a tour around the new East Side Healthy Housing Facility, 56 beds, flexible to keep men and women in separate areas. It's a vast improvement over the old drop-in centers. Now there's an industrial kitchen, full medical facilities, and a place to sleep out of the elements. And so we see them circling back and forth through the ER and the hospitals, costing five times more than the average person on our health care system, getting what I believe to be inhumane treatment because they're not getting the continuing care. This is like a fortress in a neighborhood that has a garrison, that's a professional, that are soldiers. They're going to do the things for the community, for a reinsurgence to build the community back up. Now, Linda will tell you that they've spent 15 years trying to get this place up and going. Uh, very happy about it because they say it gives them that lower tier where they can work with these people, stabilize their lives, and then help get them into essentially job training and moving them up through the differing tiers of their program so they can end up like a lot. Back to you. So when does the center open, Rod? Well, you know, Devin, uh, much like we've heard in many other cases, they say that they've got supply chain issues. So they uh -huh. wanted to be yeah. open today, but it's probably going to take at least another month or maybe more. Yeah, we'll keep following it. All right, Rod. Their meltdown caused thousands of people to miss Christmas with their families. So what did Southwest Airlines blame for this massive problem when executives were on the hot seat in front of Congress today? We'll have that coming up. And a big question, what was inside that balloon found floating above the U.S.? Tonight, the government reveals the answer and also places the blame. Doc? What's going around is changing as quickly as the weather. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Ahead, I'll show you which illnesses are causing the most trouble near you. 